Do you find it hard to memorize the names of the notes on the bass? Well, with a few of the tricks and tips I'm going to give you guys today, I promise by the end of this video, you'll be able to name the entire neck. So let's get into it. Hey guys, my name is Clay and this is my Technically Awesome series where I help you guys have awesome technique and become technically awesome. So it's getting close to the start of the school year and I wanted to do this video to show all the new bass players and those who wanted to start learning the bass this year and anyone who's been playing for years and just haven't been able to get their note names down and been using tabs, how to get your note names learned on the bass and how to do it fast. Many of my students get put off learning their note names because it looks really difficult and intimidating with how many notes there are to learn and also tab is so instant and easy. But I always make them a promise that within one lesson I can show them how to have all of their note names learnt and today I'm going to show you my top 6 tips so that you guys can have your note names learnt too. But first of all, if this is your first time checking out the channel, why don't you hit that subscribe button to become part of the bass squad and then ring that bell so you don't miss out on anything. Okay, here we go. So here's my tips for how to learn your note names fast. We're going to start with some pretty basic ones first, but stick around because it's the last three in particular that are really useful if you're one of those guys who have tried to learn your note names in the past but you just can't make them stick. <laughs> Yep, so the first thing is to learn your note names fast, ignore the sharps and the flats. Just focus on memorizing the positions of the letter name notes, or the natural notes. The sharps and the flats will come along later, once you learn where the note names are, you can figure them out quickly using the sharp and flat rules. The sharp and flat rules are pretty simple, if you want the sharp of the note, you move one fret higher, which is this way on your bass. So if you're on a G and you want G sharp, move one fret higher and you're on G sharp. If you're on G and you want G flat, move one fret lower, down that way. The only thing about this is that means that every sharp and flat has two names, so G, G flat is also F sharp, and G sharp is also A flat. Except for between B and C and E and F. B and C are always beside each other with no sharp and flat in between, and E and F are always beside each other with no sharp and flat in between. So, that means though that there still is a sharp and flat for those notes. If you want the B sharp, you still do the same rule. Move one fret higher, C is B sharp, C flat is one fret lower than C, so C flat is a B. Next up, you need to learn the open strings. I teach all my students the same mnemonic phrase that I was taught for memorizing the strings on a guitar, because a guitar has the same strings as a, as a bass, they're just one octave higher. And also there's two more, which are at the bottom of the, uh, the bass. So the bass is the top four strings of a guitar tuned one octave lower. So the name of the strings on a guitar is E, A, D, G, and then the guitar has B, E. The phrase that I've always used to teach my students how to memorize that is Eddie ate dynamite, goodbye Eddie. So obviously Eddie's gonna blow up, most students really like that because it's a bit funny. So if you just stop there at Eddie ate dynamite, good, Jeez, when you say it like that, it actually sounds pretty mean. But that is how you can memorize the names of the strings on your bass, E, A, D, G. My next tip for you guys is to only focus on learning the first 12 frets. The reason for that is this. At the 12th fret mark, everything past that point is actually just a copy and paste of everything down lower. So if you've learned it down here, you've learned it up here as well. So fret number 12 on the double dots is actually a, the same thing as the open strings up one octave. So your E, A, D, G open, uh, E, A, D, G again on the 12th fret. Then every fret past there is the same as it is down here, so that means that fret 13 is the same as fret 1. The first dot past the double dots is the same as the first dot back here, G and G, and so on. So if you learn the first 12 frets first, you've already learnt the next 12 frets as well. Also one other quick little trick I'm going to give you guys is if you're playing some tab and it's way up high past the 12th fret and you're struggling to remember the fret numbers up here then I want you to just think about it like it's a 24 hour clock. You know how 1500 is the same as 3 p.m. on a 24 hour clock? Well fret number 15 is the same as fret number 3 and fret number 17 would be the same as fret number 5, 17 and 5 p.m. It's a super handy trick to know if you're good at 24 hour time and it's a fast way to learn your fret numbers up here quickly along with their note names by converting what you already know from down here. Okay, so our next tip is 
learning the natural note spacing. So now that you know the open strings, we need to learn how far apart all the natural notes are spaced along each string. All the letters on each string move alphabetically always, from A to G, and after G it goes back to A and repeats that same thing again, A to G, A to G, over and over again. Each letter in the alphabet is spaced two frets apart. So if I start on C on the third fret, D will be two frets higher. And then if I want to go to E, it's two frets higher again. But just remember, like I said before, B to C and E to F are always one fret apart. They're right beside each other. There's no sharp and flat in between them, just like how there's no black key on a piano between those notes. So just knowing that alone and the names of the open strings, we technically can already work out the name of any note on the bass. But it's gonna take you a long time if you want to work out, for example, where high F is on the G string, you're gonna be going G, A, B, two frets to C, two frets to D, two frets to E, one fret to F. It's gonna take you a long time to get there. So the next stage is how we can get our note names to be more instantaneous and memorize them without any pattern at all. Let's get into that. Okay, so our next tip is what I call learning the alphabet pattern. And we need to work on memorizing an area of the bass that we can have on instant recall. So instead of trying to smash your head against the wall to learn the entire neck all the way across the bass, I want you to focus on just learning the first four letters of the top two strings. They will take out the fret number five of the E and the A string. So on the A string, that's gonna go like this. Open A, two frets to B on fret two, one fret to C, two frets to D. I want you to play that with me, A, B, C, and D. I want you to also say the letter names out loud if you're playing this at home right now. Say them out loud because learning that pattern is quite easy. But it's the note names that you need to associate with those spaces that are more, most important. It's like how when you first make your pin number on your phone or your credit card, you do it with numbers, but over time you kind of forget what the numbers are and they just become some kind of shape that you input. And then somebody asks you for your pin number and you, which you should never really give out, but somebody asks you for your pin number for something and you realize you can't do it by number, you have to actually see a keypad to tell them what the numbers are. You don't want that to happen when you're learning your note names where you have the pattern learnt, but you don't know what the letters are. So keep saying them out loud to make sure you associate those note names with what you're doing. So there's A, B, C, D. We'll do the same thing on the E string, so it'll be open E, one fret to F, two frets to G, two frets to A. E, F, G, and A. So the reason why we're gonna focus on just that amount of area is because learning four of anything doesn't take much time for anybody. And that gives us one of every letter that we need to play in the lowest octave that it can be played. So just on the A string, play it with me a few times, go A, B, C, D. Now try it backwards, D, C, B, A. Again, A, B, C, D, D, C, B, A. What I want you to do is pause the video now for one minute and just go up and down saying those letters over and over again for one minute and come back and then we're gonna keep going. Okay, you're back? So let's move on to the E string, do the same thing again. I want you to play E, F, G, A. Now let's play it backwards, go A, G, F, E. Again, pause the video here and repeat that up and down for one minute now and see if you can get that really learned well and come back. So if you got that down, the next thing to do is to play the entire alphabet from A to A. Go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Repeat that a few times to yourself. Try it backwards. A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. Excellent. So if you've done that a bunch of times now, we should have that area instantly learnt without having to go through the whole pattern. If I say play a G, you should be going straight to fret number three to play your G. Now, I know what you're thinking, and that's probably that you've just spent three minutes memorizing notes and all you managed to do was learn this tiny area of the bass. What about all the notes down on the bottom two strings and all the rest of the bass? Well, that's what the next tip is all about to help bring it all together. Okay, so my last tip for you guys is the octave rule. Now you may have heard of this rule before, but it's how you combine this rule with the other five that we've covered today that's gonna to help fill in all of the blanks on the bass for you. So the octave rule is this. If you want to find a note one octave higher than one of the low notes you already know the name of, so you're on low D, for example, and you want a high D, 
move two frets across and two strings down and you've got the same note up one octave so that's low d high d if you want a high a flat go to a flat down here cross two down two and you've got the octave on a flat so this actually means that you know the names of the notes across all the bass now except for this area between the eighth and eleventh frets this is why we often refer to this area as the no man's land for most bass players, is it's the last area we tend to be able to fill in with our note name knowledge well. But we can infiltrate this no man's land up here pretty well too, if we just go back to the natural note spacing rule. So if you go from your highest note that you know from on each string, so if we go to the high D up here, two frets higher you will have high E. And if you go to your lowest high note that you know up here, G, if you go back two frets from there, you know you're going to be on F. And same on the other string, if you're on high A here, two frets high will be B. Or if you're on the high D up here, two frets back is going to be C. So it doesn't take long to fill that space in. There's really only two notes on each string that you need to add to your memorizing to learn how to play them. And it doesn't take long to be able to get them down as well. So the fact that you've now got the entire bass covered and all you've really had to focus on memorizing was those first five frets on the top two strings, this little area, is a pretty high reward for the amount of effort that you had to put in. Okay, so that's it. Now I hope that list helped you guys get a better grip on your note names on the bass. Just try to make that alphabet pattern part of your daily routine because everything we learned today really stems from your solid knowledge of that small area of the bass. So that's all I've got for you guys for today's Technical Tuesday lesson. Make sure to let me know in the comment section if you guys have any technical questions you want me to answer. And also, I'd love to hear it if you guys have any better mnemonic phrases for learning the open strings than Eddie Ate Dynamite Goodbye Eddie. I've heard lots of crazy ones over the years and I want to know what is your favorite phrase for learning the open strings on the bass. So as always guys, if you enjoyed this lesson, please feel free to leave a like. And then I'll see you guys for another Funky Friday song lesson in a few days. But until then, go play, practice, and play some more. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and then click on one of these two videos to see what YouTube thinks you should watch next. Hey, they're both my videos. Good choice, YouTube.